Я радий вас вітати на нашій традиційній щорічній зустрічі. I would like to welcome you at our traditional annual meeting that usually happens in the first quarter of each year. Since the meeting held last year, we have crossed paths with you multiple times in different formats at staff talks, military exercises, meetings, conferences, and other events. You have witnessed an extremely challenging but also extremely eventful year, and you have a clear understanding of what has been going on over the past year as well. Strategic direction for the development of the armed forces of Ukraine remains unchanged. We are building up combat capabilities, taking into account the need for administrative, operational, and logistic interoperability with the forces of the NATO member states. I believe that today there is no doubt about the fact that by protecting Ukraine, its independence and sovereignty, our armed forces protect the entire Europe as well. Ukrainian army currently is the guarantee of the security of the entire Euro-Atlantic region. It is worth noting that on February 21st of this year, the President of Ukraine has signed the law adopted by Verkhovna Rada on amendments to the Constitution of Ukraine that solidify the strategic course to EU and NATO membership. The armed forces of Ukraine have a very special place in contemporary Ukraine. Only by having a strong, highly motivated and professional army can Ukraine be successful. Complete support of the government and the president of Ukraine, absolute trust and respect of the nation allow us to protect our country and take measures necessary for the comprehensive transformation of the Ukrainian armed forces. The armed forces of Ukraine comprehensively achieve four groups of objectives. First, we continue to deter direct Russian aggression in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions and the basins of the Azov and Black Sea as a part of the Joint Forces operation. For the first time in our history, on November 26, 2018, the martial law was enacted in 10 regions of Ukraine in response to numerous Russian provocations culminating in an open-armed attack against the boats and the tugboat of the Ukrainian Navy. As of today, Ukrainian Navy sailors have been held hostage by the Russians for over a hundred days. In the 30 days of the martial law legal regime, we have taken the urgent measures necessary to ensure the defense of our country. While deploying joint forces units on threatening directions, we have also raised the issue of legal settlement, reviewed the system of logistic support, and improved the cooperation between the local governmental bodies and territorial defense units. Second, we are conducting a comprehensive reform of the C2 system and the organizational staff structure considering existing and potential threats. And also, we are gradually changing the mentality and leadership culture of the military leaders on operational and strategic levels. In current geopolitical realia, we anticipate an increased threat level in three out of four geographical directions, being north, east and south. The Russian side is finishing the establishment of striking force units along the Ukrainian border that together with the special forces, according to the plans of Kremlin strategies, will make up the main body of the invasion forces. High mobility, adaptability and autonomy of our forces, in combination with the motherland factor is our strategic advantage over the occupant's forces. Last week, during the operational and strategic training with the key leadership of the armed forces of Ukraine, we paid particular attention to developing non-standard solutions for planning and conducting operations when being outnumbered by the enemy. Third, we are implementing a new system of professional training for the personnel while increasing the level of material motivation at the same time. We were able to achieve great success in the professional training on the tactical level due to, top, due to adopting a quality-oriented principle of training instead of a quantity-oriented one. This is something that has been highlighted not only by our general staff, but also by the international advisors. At the recently established professional schools for snipers, tank men, anti-tank system operators, engineers, and UAV operators, we were able to combine theoretical methodologies with practical combat experience obtained at the front line. And just like the training system, the certification, qualification, and
and financial bonus systems for the personnel have been changed as well. Such an approach already yields positive results. Currently, we seek to improve the training of HQ on all levels, taking into account NATO procedures. Providing training that ensures cohesiveness for the operational level staffs based on combat simulation systems and lessons learned from the real military operations is our priority. Fourth, we have started equipping the force not only with the modernized but also with completely new weaponry and equipment systems. Thus, if the state defense procurement request for 2019 is fulfilled, we will increase the quantity of new equipment by two times if compared to previous years. Restoring and taking in service air defense systems and modernizing rockets for these systems, equipping the airborne assault brigades and army brigades with domestically produced anti-tank systems, additionally equipping the forces with lightly armored vehicles and modernizing cargo vehicles and equipment, increasing the numbers of domestically produced UAV systems in reconnaissance and artillery units, equipping the Air Force units with electronic warfare and surveillance equipment. I want to highlight that today we have the people and the means to stop Russian tanks and planes. The period of the so-called pre-election turbulence that our state has entered is being used by the Russian Federation to conduct a complex of special operations to curtail the defense potential of Ukraine. We have witnessed a significant increase in the enemy's activities in the informational domain, where the enemy is using informational operations and psychological operations in an effort to influence the servicemen. Moreover, at the same time, we do not exclude the possibility of certain direct influence operations. We are taking all of the necessary measures to prevent similar scenarios from happening. At the same time, we also rely on the professionalism of our special services and national police, as well as the patriotism and vigilance of regular citizens. In conclusion, I would like to say that the main achievement of the armed forces of Ukraine throughout all of these war fighting years is the highest level of trust from society amongst all of the state institutions. We feel a heightened sense of responsibility and are grateful to the Ukrainian nation for believing in the armed forces. It makes us stronger and inspires us. The unity of the armed forces and the nation is the key to our victory over the occupant.